Today, I want to talk about my problem with selling AI generated art on Etsy. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that this is something that I've been making a lot of videos about lately. And this is something that I spend a lot of time now. And the appeal of it is great because it's very easy to do. I put the prompt in the mid journey, mid journey creates art. I sell this art on Etsy because Etsy allows you to sell digital products. It's a great concept, but the grass is not always green, right? There are some issues with it. And I've been doing this for over a month now and I am experiencing some issues with, with this. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the pros and cons of this whole concept. And I also want to talk about morality of using AI generated art and selling it on Etsy, because that's something that I think um, it's not talked about a lot. And I'm just going to give you my opinion about it. Okay. From a perspective of someone that actually is selling AI generated art on Etsy. So very briefly, what I've been doing lately is I've been using mid journey, which is AI generator. You spend a couple of bucks a month and it generates really, really good images. It can produce almost anything you want. So I've been using this tool and I've been putting prompts like, I don't know, I want a dancing cat or something. And the AI generator will generate that the art for me. And then I would get that piece of picture post on Etsy and sell it as a digital print or sometimes get print on the man product, maybe on a t-shirt or something like that. So that's the idea here. Okay. That's what I've been doing here. And again, the, the idea is very simple and it just sounds great on paper, but here's my number one struggle with this. Okay. The results take a long time. And what I mean by that is that I started getting sales after listing good amount of listings and, and like the SEO machine to build up and get views on my listings. It took me a while. And on top of that, the profits, profits are very low. I can show you a screenshot of one of my stores. And as you can see, it generates very little money. If I compare this to, for example, marketplace dropshipping on eBay or Facebook marketplace, I can see results way faster. Selling digital products on Etsy, it's more of a longer game. It takes time to build up your store and actually see any results. It might be because my store is brand new, but I also started dropshipping on our eBay and Facebook marketplace with brand new accounts. And again, I saw results faster, but I'm not complaining. I'm actually pretty okay with it. I prefer to grow slower and learn the process because this is so new to me. This whole selling art on Etsy, digital art on Etsy is very new to me. So I'm okay with, with growing slowly and learning myself how to do this properly. There's not many people doing this anyway. So there's not like someone that I can go to and ask a question how to do it. There are some people that do it, but again, it's not a lot of people and this whole AI revolution is still new as well. So we all kind of new as it goes. Big reason why is this happening? I think it's because of the SEO. It takes time to build up your SEO on Etsy and Etsy is very SEO based. It's very important to put the keywords that people are looking for. Tools like Everbee can help you with that. So I'm taking my sweet time to learn all of that and build up my store. And that's another point that I want to make. It looks to me like your Etsy store has to have a vibe. You need to build a vibe. Okay. And what I mean by vibe, you can also read as a brand. You're you kind of have to build a brand. The reason being why I'm saying vibe is because whenever you go on Etsy and you visit a store, very often you see a certain theme, okay? Certain products with certain theme that reappear. I can go on one store and I'm going to see that one of the themes on that store are cats, or maybe I can go another one and I can see that theme on that store are t-shirts with uh, slogans and catchy phrases, okay? So every store on Etsy seems like to have this certain vibe, aesthetic brand. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to build a brand on Etsy. That's my main focus. So whenever I produce these images, I make sure that these images keep the certain aesthetic and vibe. There's a reoccurring theme. Okay. It might be a LSD type of mushroom t-shirt or something that you're trying to sell, or maybe it's some fantastical creatures. I don't know, dragons on a dark night sky flying around. And that those are the images that you're trying to sell. That's the theme you're trying to sell. Or maybe a Van Gogh cat, you know, traveling the world. I don't know. Like those are the themes that you can follow. And I think at the beginning, when you're building up, you should stick to it. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I think that's helping me out. Basically, I am building a brand. And because of the fact that I'm trying to build a brand, that leads me to another point that I'm trying to make. Quality over quantity. I think it's more important to focus on a good quality art rather than just generating a lot of it and just 
posting as many as you can. I don't think this is a number game. I think this is a quality game. To be honest with you, it's probably a kind of mix of both quality and quantity together. That way you can scale the most. But if you have limited resources, if it's just you or maybe you and your VA or something, and you are trying to nail this aesthetic that you're aiming for, it's going to take time. And I think it's easier to produce one really, really good product that's SEO optimized, it looks great, and it keeps the aesthetic of your store rather than produce 10 mediocre ones that might not be as SEO optimized as you want and the quality might be worse because not every listing will sell, only certain ones. And the one that sells, it's probably gonna sell again because that's what I'm noticing on my store. I have a couple of listings that just have constant reoccurring sales and they basically dominate the, the, the shop sales. And then I have a couple ones that either don't get any sales or maybe occasional ones here and there. So it's better to Focus on quality, in my opinion, over quantity if you don't have resources, if you don't have multiple people that understand the theme and aesthetic you're trying to build to outsource your work, okay? And because of your focus on quality, another thing that you're probably gonna end up doing is a lot of tweaking. This is what I spend a lot of time on. And when I say tweaking, is just fixing little things, okay? Even though Mid Journey is capable of generating really good art, very often there are certain small things that I need to fix myself. For example, the DPI, okay, this is the number one thing that you guys leave up under my comments, is that DPI is very low on the images that the Mid Journey is generating. So I usually just add it in Photoshop. Photoshop has this build up feature that can increase the resolution of the images. So I usually do it over there, but a lot of you guys don't have Photoshop and you're saying that this is something that you struggle with. So what you can do is you can download GIMP. GIMP is like a Photoshop, but it's a open source software. And I'm sure GIMP has the same feature as well. And also in the previous video, I shared the link to a website that also can convert images into a DPI, but apparently it's not that good based on some of your comments. But the DPI thing, it's not really that big of a deal. To me, the biggest problem is just like small fixes, okay? Maybe there is a shape or a dot or something that doesn't just fit the picture, okay? Very often I ask my journey to, I don't know, generate a cat picture and the eye of the cat looks kinda, it doesn't match the face. So I either have to give a better prompt and kinda fix that, or I can just take it in Photoshop and edit it in Photoshop. And I know those are small details which very often can be fixable with a couple of clicks, but they all adds up, you know? That, slow, that slows down the process of scaling this whole business. Again, I'm gonna compare this to like eBay and Facebook Marketplace dropshipping, where the tweaking doesn't take that much time. I can create a Facebook or eBay listing very fast, but with AI generating, you know, I might spend a couple extra minutes on just trying to adjust the picture, trying to fix it in order to, it's gonna look good, presentable, and then putting on the mock-up, which also take time to create because I create custom mockups in Canva usually. I don't use the mockups that you get from like Printful or Printify or something like that because these are very popular mockups. Everyone else is using them. So I go to Canva or I go to different websites to find free mockups and then put them together. And that also takes time. So I'm trying to build up a system that will kind of help me speed up that process. Maybe there's a software that can kind of help me with that at the moment. It's it's kind of just me. So it's a minor struggle. I'm just trying to optimize my workflow. That's what I'm trying to say. So these are all kind of like technical business related issues, okay? But now I wanna talk about something else. I wanna talk about morality of doing this, okay? Of selling AI generated art on Etsy. And what I mean by that is that a lot of artists that actually do create art and selling on platforms like Etsy, or maybe they just sell them on their own. Maybe they have like their own online shop, or maybe they sell it on Instagram. Doesn't matter. Any artist that generates actual art, you know, they paint it, they, they draw it, whatever. How do they feel about it? Okay. And how I should feel about this. Someone who is kind of using a cheat sheet by using AI to kind of do this for me, okay? Because I got a couple of comments on my videos from I assume artists, they're kind of upset with all this AI stuff. And I kind of understand that, but here's my take on it. I don't think AI can replace your art as long as it's really good. Because even those images that I generate using AI, they're not perfect. They, they have flaws, okay? They look great, whatever. It's very easy to do it. But very often I still end up kind of doing like a post-production 
in Photoshop and edited them because they are not the best. And to me, art is a very subjective matter, meaning how do you define, you know, something that is great, like a great piece of art. From my very limited perspective, from someone that's not really into art, but I can appreciate good piece of art is that I think a lot of it has to do with the name and your reputation as an artist. If you are a famous artist, that's why people go to you and buy to you. If your reputation is remarkable, your crowd will always buy from you. It's almost like being a good influencer. If you vibe with your crowd, if you're an influencer, if you vibe with your people, the people that follow you, these people will buy anything that you kind of promote to them. This might sound like a stupid comparison, but that's how I see it. So I don't think artists should be really that concerned with AR art. But again, I'm just someone that's kind of cheating this system and I might be wrong. And I actually decided to reach out to someone that I know that is an artist and he makes living out of it. I asked his opinion about all of this AI stuff and his answer was very optimistic. And I don't know, that's because his personality is optimistic because he's a very positive person. But he said he's not really concerned about it because this AI stuff can speed up his workflow. He said that he started using it as well. So he can get like a quick draft or a concept art that then he uses to create his art off or maybe modify the one that AI is generating. His take on it was very positive. And I really like that but I might be biased because again, I'm using it to make money and kind of cheat the system. He's using it to improve his work. And it's just one example. I'm sure if I ask more, I could probably find someone else that will have a completely different opinion on it. And I think only time will tell who is right and who's wrong and how should we interpret it, this AI revolution that's happening right now. One thing for sure, this is probably not going anywhere. This is actually probably gonna get better and more improved. So I think we should learn how to live with it. Oh, by the way, happy Valentine's Day. I just realized that this video is gonna be released during the Valentine's. I'm actually running a promo right now for my Facebook Marketplace eBay dropshipping course. If you wanna learn how to start doing all of that, you're gonna also get access to our private Discord and weekly meetings over a voice chat with me. The coupon code is LOVE, which is gonna give you a percentage discount. And on top of that, I'm actually running another promo that's been running for a while now, which is buy one course and get the other one for free. So you're gonna get the Facebook one and the eBay one for the price of one course, plus additional discount if you use the coupon code LOVE. So it's a super deal, but this is a very quick promo. It's gonna expire on February 16th. So hop on it fast. That's all I have for you today. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Take care.